you know that things are just kind of getting bad again when the laundry starts piling up looking like a little volcano just been kind of very 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 anxious honestly a lot of panic attacks and i would kind of like to explore more of that and talk about more of that with you because i know that whenever i do whenever i do talk about it it helps at least one person i always see that it helps at least one person usually more and so i just want to talk about it more haircut this morning it's been a long time since I had it cut I don't think I'm gonna go for anything too dramatic just like a trim and I need someone to thin this out because it's just so heavy and there's so much hair so I think I'm just gonna get a trim and a um, thin my hair is still kind of damp from washing it last night I don't does anyone do this like I know they're gonna wash it for me there but I feel like I always try to wash my hair before I go anyway. The heat wave has been pretty rough. I, I am out of breath because I'm pretty anxious this morning. Just woke up feeling anxious, another sleepless night. I tried to get a little bit put together, put on a dress this morning that I haven't worn in a long time and I'm gonna go get my hair cut. So I think I'm just gonna put it back in like a low ponytail. Welcome to the anxiety diaries. Um, I couldn't really stomach too much of a breakfast this morning. I'm just gonna try to eat when I get back. And I really, you know, I don't really have anything to be particularly anxious about, if I'm being honest. Well, let's not go down that hole. Stop blabbing. We've got this. I think I'm gonna bring an umbrella just in case. So I will see you when this looks a little bit different. What do we think? She took a lot of length off, I think, but she did curl it as well, so it's a bit curly right now, but she put, she thinned it, which, thank God. I think I did have to pay an extra charge because, oh my God, some hair places put an extra charge if you have really thick hair. I think I paid that today. Really thinned it out, so, oh my God, guys, I feel like I dropped 50 pounds or something like this is insane feeling better i got myself a little treat on the way home i got a latte and this little um cardamom knot thing that i really like right now i need to feed my little minions before oh he's already sitting there waiting to be fed i have a bit i definitely have a bit of a headache because it's just so hot out there it's so hot and it was a bit of a walk it was a bit of a walk home wanting to get my hair cut for a while the last time Someone cut my hair was a year ago <laughs> when Carolyn came over. Carolyn was the last one who cut my hair, so that was a little sad. I'm interrupting with another haul, and this one is from Berga, who is very kindly sponsoring today's video. Berga launches beautiful designs for phone cases, AirPod cases, laptop cases, drinkware. They are gorgeous, protective, durable, Taylor Swift uses them and the cases are also like always trending on tiktok you can obviously see why their mission is to reimagine everyday products that you use on the daily into gorgeous fashion designs i got to pick out four phone cases which i love so i got a couple of their elite cases which offers the ultimate blend of beauty and protection so their cloud guard technology absorbs up to 90 percent of the impact force when you just you know you drop your phone there are raised bezels around the camera and screen to protect the glass on the inside it has a microfiber lining to prevent any scratches this is the first one that i got obviously i had to go in for the winter style with snowflakes this one is the midnight kiss iphone case this is one of the elite ones so cute i'm so happy that they had like a winter case because obviously the other elite case that i got is actually on my phone right now and that is the bambi elite case and i also decided to get one of the little phone rings with it so i can hold it rest it on its side to watch videos it's so 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 cute the laptop case that i decided to get is so cute it has bows all over it and this case is called ballerina and then i also got a couple of their tough cases so the tough cases have two layers they have the silicone interior and then a very hard shell exterior the tough ones are if you want that extra tough protection if you're just hella clumsy and you're just throwing your phone all over the place so the first one that i got is called serene sunset love this color and then this one i got because i wanted to 
put it on in the summer and this one is called Iluwatu Waves. They also have a 12 month warranty on the cases. They are made in Europe. Emberga also aims to cut down on overproduction so they don't actually start making the cases until the order is placed, which is nice. So if you guys are looking for a gift idea for friends or family this summer, Berga is also offering a great deal where you can get four cases for the price of two with the link. And as well, you can also get an extra 15% off with my code EMMAX15. There's a mini haul. Let's get back to the books. And thank you so much to Berga. Links are in the description. The day after getting my haircut, I came down with whatever this is um, I know COVID is kind of going around the city right now I'm not sure if it's COVID because all of my tests are expired that I had during the pandemic I got COVID really bad when I got it and this is not feeling really anything more than just a normal cold although of course it still could be COVID I just don't know so I'm not feeling great but we're pushing through it because when I get sick realistically I should rest more but I just keep pushing myself to do things and like I just kind of act like I'm not sick <laughs> like gaslighting the virus into going away. It's been a rough couple of weeks that I just didn't pick up the camera to film vlogs because they're a bit more personal, vulnerable. They take a lot more work in terms of filming, editing, putting together, but I just love them so much. I'm finally coming out of just kind of a really bad place, um, that mountain of laundry that you saw. I just finished the last load today and I put it all away. And then of course, when I start feeling a little bit better mentally, <laughs> the body's like, oh no, 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 wait, I had to catch up and it hits me with whatever this is. So this week I think is just gonna be, today's Monday, is just gonna be getting back into it, getting back into the swing of things. I was really looking forward to going back to the gym because I took, I was literally just in no fit place to do anything. So I took some time off from working out and now I guess I have to take a little bit more time off. It's just, I can't even describe it to you. It's something I've never, been able to describe to someone who doesn't feel it. It's just like dread, dread, doom, destruction, death. Like the fear, not even the fear, just the experience of all those things weighing on you at once. And for me, I just immediately want to eject out of my own body. I'm hitting the eject button over and over and over again. And obviously you can't leave yourself. You can't leave yourself behind. You got to stay right where you are. And so for me, who's never really been taught or grew up learning how to trust my own body and feel safe within myself, that takes so much work. And it's something that I've been working on a lot these past two years, especially since moving here, because living here really spikes my anxiety and it has been. So it's just like a constant trying to be okay within yourself kind of feeling and learning to be like, okay, I don't need to hit hit the eject button on the spaceship. You know, we can stay, we can stay under control. We can just like, you know, mess with the little button. It's just awful. Panic attacks are just awful. I have been reading, I've actually been reading a lot, but I've been reading a lot more um, from books that I normally wouldn't pick up in succession. So I've been reading a lot of romance, a lot of just like slice of life and also um, our book club picks for Game of Tomes and for Fa uh, not for Fable, <laughs> the World Tour, which are both on Fable. But I really wanted to tell you about them because I've been reading a couple of books that I didn't know how I would feel about, and I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about what I've been thinking about them. So I'm currently in, I'm currently reading four books, no, five books. Ooh. First one that I picked up is Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. I bought this a year ago because I saw it was making the rounds on booktube. I was honestly, I was honestly just kind of excited to pick this up. This is pretty much, and it is, it is. The pitching is so correct. This is Gossip Girl. Like it's just Gossip Girl. It's Gossip Girl in London. Actually kind of close to finishing this. It is a very quick read, although it is a longer book, but I am 372 pages in and we do follow Magnolia and she has basically been in love with this boy named BJ for forever. It's kind of been her end all be all since childhood, but uh, four years ago before the book starts, he cheated on her with someone and we don't know who. And of course they broke up because he cheated. And since then they have just been in the most toxic, almost relationship for four years. Like he sleeps with every single person that he sees. She um, acquires like all these fake boyfriends to try and make him jealous. At night they still both go home with one another and just like sleep next to each other at night. And they just have the weirdest, most effed up relationship ever. There's also quite a big cast of characters because they all have friends. So you get to follow all of their friends in very, 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 very upper class, like hanging around or brushing past Kate Middleton kind of upper class. 
is what we're talking about. They're all extremely rich, extremely privileged, extremely well off, and it shows like the way that they behave. Don't read this if you don't want to read about awful people. Don't read this if you don't like watching people screw their own lives up, knowing that they're doing it. I think this is wonderfully entertaining. I'm not gonna lie, the writing, um, I thought I was having a stroke while I was reading the uh, prologue, but it turns out that that is just the writing style. How many people do you get to call yours? There are all sorts of loves in this world, not all of them, but most of them are beautiful. There are all sorts of loves in this world, comma, not all of them, comma, like that's just not how English works. It's fun. I'm just having a fun time. Like I'm not taking it too seriously. I am here for the drama and the gossip girlness of it all. So the problem is that one of the fake boyfriends that Magnolia employed, they're both starting to fake date each other, is this guy named Tom England. The problem is that they kind of both begin to fall for each other. And of course, the whole question the whole time has been, who did BJ cheat on Magnolia with? Because we don't know, she doesn't know, he keeps making up excuses, and for some reason, he doesn't want to tell her who. Like, he has no problem after the fact sleeping with gajillions of people and like name dropping them at all times but he won't tell her who the original person that he cheated on her with is like he's not disclosing that information and so obviously we're about to get a bombshell me personally i'm not going to tell you my theories i'm not going to tell you my theories because i don't want to spoil it for all the negative things i would critique about the writing style sometimes jessa hastings just drops in lines that go right to your heart i missed him and wanted to be around him because he's the kind of person you be around you be around at all costs and believe you me it was all cost i have about 45 pages left of this so i think i might just sit down right now and hammer the rest of it out because i really really want to know how it ends um and it is a series but we each each book follows different people in the friend group so honestly as it stands now i would continue it i was not sure how magnolia parks was gonna go but i can just kind of enjoy it for what it is I told you guys that i finished all of those loads of laundry and he, i have a problem so somehow how someone explain this to me how does this even happen these are all of the mismatched pairs of socks i only have one one it's not like they're hiding somewhere because not only did i do my laundry i cleaned out my whole closet and i went through everything and they're nowhere to be found like all of these this is a stupid amount of socks to only have one pair for so i'm gonna have to start matching people up here um, because this is like where do they all go? I don't understand like I know this happens to everyone I truly don't understand where everyone's socks go. Okay, so These two are gonna go together <laughs> because they're black and then these two are gonna go together because they're also dark and then These two are fuzzy socks. So sure these two are gray and then these two I guess can be white and then I have one more fuzzy sock and one more white sock. They vanish into the quantum universe? I don't know. power is still out which means that the ac is off and this is like the second time in a little bit that it's been off this week because we've been having heat waves which is not great and now we are having so much rain which is why the power is out yesterday my hometown flooded today it's toronto's turn i guess i just got a notice from my building saying that the lower levels of the building like a bunch of the parking levels and the garages are flooded <laughs> And obviously the power is out and I've heard that downtown Toronto those streets are also flooded ended up having like cereal instead and I tried to use a bunch of extra milk because I just got groceries and the fridge is full of groceries so I'm really hoping 
the power comes back on soon. Do you want to hear my story? Okay, so it's a short story. Don't worry. It's a short horror story. Said that I just got groceries. I ordered them in. Thinking, oh, great. They're going to be delivered to me. That's great. I can get everything that I need. I can get my Tylenol and all this stuff. Anyway, long story short. It's not a long story to begin with. They get here. I pick them up, bring them into the apartment, start unloading all of my new groceries. Turns out there was um, a visitor, shall we say, either in the grocery bag that was delivered to me or potentially in the pasta box that I ordered of like penne. What comes out? What pops out and starts running around my counter? It was a cockroach. It was a cockroach. Thankfully not my first rodeo, so dealt with that, but oh wow. Stuff has just been happening. I don't know what is going on what I've cursed, what secret artifact, what old book that I've opened and the dust has, maybe it was the thrift books package, man, because so much has happened. I already said that like I got my fingers, it's better now, but I, for a while there, I couldn't feel my one finger. Got my fingers crushed in my big apartment door. I got sick, heat wave, AC broke, cockroaches running around my counter. This is all in the span of like two days, by the way. Um, and then I also stepped in poison ivy. That was my first experience with poison ivy. It's not fun and it's like, shocking how immediate it is because i think i only brushed brushed some of the ivy i don't think it was a lot of it but like instantly your skin bubbles up so all over my legs and my hand thankfully i did not like i said i don't think i touched much of it or i just might not be that sensitive to it because i know some people have like severe allergic reactions but it has faded now my leg is still a little itchy but <sighs> today obviously i woke up and the floods and the power is out the horrors persist and so do i also wanted to give not like a life update but just a little update on the uh housing search because you guys know i've been really trying to find somewhere else to move preferably obviously out of toronto and um yeah just out of toronto <laughs> that's the only requisite so over the weekend i actually went to view a house which is really exciting not like to buy oh my god in this economy it was honestly the cutest little place it was in the country in a pretty rural area and it was pretty old it had so much character it was gorgeous there was a little like river running behind it, it had a good amount of like yard space let's talk probably youtube is not the place to go into chats about the housing market so i'll just keep it brief basically when i got there there were like a few things wrong with it to begin with the basement was like unfinished which i don't really care about the because it's like a landlord i guess or like whoever owns the house renting it out the basement was just like kind of scary it was definitely one of those horror scary basements and it was just so musty it's just weird right because first of all they're asking so much money for the place which i'll get to in a second but the landlord or the rental person or whoever owns the house because like i don't really know who it is right because a realtor shows you the house they had left so much stuff of their own in the house like the basement was full of random stuff there was furniture just like random furniture it, the house didn't say it was furnished but there was just which i don't i don't want in the first place it was just like random pieces of furniture everywhere like a dresser here a stool there a lamp there there were a couple weird paintings on the walls and i asked the realtor I was like, okay, these obviously don't come with the house, right? Like someone is just moving out and he's like, no, you should just leave those there Because it was like, okay, I'm renting you a house, but it's full of my junk And then same thing with the garage. The garage was like honestly kind of a health hazard Falling apart, honestly caving in. The roof was falling apart and like full of just random garage stuff that you would expect the realtor was like oh yeah you just leave that there but you could probably still fit your car in. the whole thing with the price as well when i got there the realtor was like yeah we've just like lowered the price on the house and i was like okay great i love that you've lowered the price what is it not a big house it was a bungalow wasn't even that much bigger than my apartment because the basement was frankly unusable as a space that you would want to be in there's only one bedroom one bath per month three thousand five hundred and fifty dollars <coughs> And that was lowered is why probably the main reason that every time people are like Emma just move. What are you doing there? Emma move. I'm like Ontario Honestly three thousand five hundred dollars a month plus all utilities plus internet plus insurance That is on the lower spectrum of a lot of places that I have seen So anyway, I updated you guys on oh, no, I didn't I didn't I updated yesterday that I was trying to finish Magnolia Parks And I finally did I got my tabs all in it so Magnolia Parts is done. I finished it last night and I was really waiting for the twist because this book has no plot. Like 
the same things just happen over and over and over again. I'm not gonna critique this too much because I just tried to enjoy it for what it was. And I mean, look at all the nice lines that I ultimately did get out of it. But the twist at the end was none of the things that I was predicting and I didn't really find it that shocking because you do find out who BJ cheated on Magnolia with. And I just think they could have done so much more with that. I think they could have made it something just a bit I think they could have used it to talk about some things. I was kind of hoping for like one of three options and none of those things happened and instead it was just like, okay. Um, so the ending was a little bit of a letdown. That being said, I would definitely still be interested <laughs> in continuing on with the series because I think it was just a fun, trashy time. I've started watching Gossip Girl as well, actually. The original Gossip Girl, which I never watched growing up. I never read the books growing up. It's on Netflix now and I've started watching it and I'm on season two. I definitely don't have a problem in like my fiction watching awful people doing awful things. And because there's absolutely no drama in my life, I have to get it from somewhere else. I will say that this is definitely 100% like um, Chuck and Blair who are my favorite characters in Gossip Girl. I just love Chuck. I just think he's the most ridiculous over the top character. I can't stand Serena. I can't stand the way that she talks. It sounds like she's underwater. She can't enunciate and it's just, she's so whiny and awful and I hate Dan. I hate Dan and Serena. I don't care about them. They have zero chemistry. I'm just really here for Chuck and Blair. And that is basically what this book is. I'm, oh! I wore my lemon shirt today. I'm also reading As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow for the World Tour Book Club. In this one, the author aims to basically teach a younger audience because this is young adult about the Syrian revolution. So um, with this one, this is how far I am through. I started by enjoying it um, quite a bit and I was really getting into it, but the more and more that this goes on, the more and more I'm just like, 130 pages through, it's definitely a bit repetitive. It's following Salama, who works at a hospital. She's 18. She's definitely not supposed to be working as like a surgeon or nurse. In fact, she's a pharmacology student, but because of the times and because of what is happening, she's been forced into this role of basically just trying to save people's lives when they are brought in from so many different attacks that are going on. At the same time, uh, she's lost her whole family except for her sister-in-law, who's also her best friend, who is pregnant, and the two of them are trying to make the hard decision to leave Syria um, to escape for a better life. And she doesn't want to leave because she's like, I am helping so many people here, but of course at the same time she's like, I really need to help my pregnant sister-in-law. I liked it in the beginning for sure, definitely a bit repetitive, and I noticed this a lot with I think newer authors, they tend to use a lot of the same formulas in their chapters. Like literally, this is what I love about writing. You can break it down so much into like, like literally math and stats and different formulas, but it's just a little bit tiring when, just to use an example, she meets um, the man that before the revolution started, she would have probably been arranged to marry and she meets him and she starts to fall in love with him because there's also a romance in this book. But the thing that keeps being used over and over again in place of like actually any development or um, tearing the feelings out of the reader. Maybe it tears the feelings out of other readers, but not me. She keeps talking about this might life, like the life that she might have had if things had been different and if she had been allowed to be with Kanan, who is the boy. Formula is A plus B equals C. A, she'll see him do something or like remark upon how beautiful he is. B, she will be like, oh, it's the might life that I might have had. The might life that was robbed from us or the might life that could have been beautiful. Like in every single chapter now, since meeting Kanan, this has happened. And then C, it equals this huge long paragraph. It's always the exact same. Like you have a short piece of A, a short piece of B equals a long piece of C. And that long piece of C is a paragraph detailing the life that they might have had. The first time it was definitely a little bit stirring and beautiful. By the second, third, and fourth time now, it's become old, it's become trite, it's become overused, and I'm like, you can't keep using the same formula here because it's not working anymore. It feels lazy. And obviously I'm like not begrudging her or the characters for falling in love so suddenly in wartime or any of that stuff. It's just the writing style that is not making it work. And almost in every um, C section, in almost every product that is made in that formula, um, Studio Ghibli is mentioned. And I thought, 
The first few times, the first like little couple of times Studio Ghibli was name dropped, I found it charming and cute, but it's become in almost every chapter Studio Ghibli is name dropped for some reason. It's too much. It is frankly too much. In that life, I'd train here and he'd be waiting for me on the steps of the hospital doodling in his sketchbook. He'd quiz me on my next pharmacology exam. But we'd get distracted. I'd tell him about the stories I have in my mind that are inspired by Studio Ghibli, that I too find little bits of magic in our world. But just like every time they talk to each other, she'll be like, oh, like Studio Ghibli. Or, oh, you want to work at it like an animation place, like Studio Ghibli. Or like, oh, this reminded me of Studio... And I'm like, whoa. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. What I would have liked more than just name dropping Studio Ghibli and like mentioning how- because this book actually starts with a dedication to Miyazaki from Ghibli. What I would have liked more is just homage paid to their kind of storytelling and the kind of magical features that they amplify in the story, um, which she does do as well. Obviously the wonderful- well not the wonderful <laughs> character of Koff, who uh, is this man, but he's not a man. He's basically a manifestation of her anxiety and fear, which is great. And it's definitely reminiscent of the of Studio Ghibli and the way that it's done in here, but I just would have liked that to be the thing that we focus on. Like you can name drop you can name drop it a couple of times, but once you keep just being like, oh that reminds me of Studio Ghibli, oh my god, that is like Studio Ghibli. It's just like okay. I think for people who aren't into Studio Ghibli or who don't know all of the gorgeous, wonderful things that have been created in that studio, it's not gonna do very much. So what I would have liked to have seen is just more of creating that magic in the story in and of itself, and maybe more is coming, but it's just a little like, it just feels lazy. It feels a little bit cheap in terms of description. I also have a bit of a haul to do for you. I've been, there's just been like a box or a bag um, next to my bed that went online through shopping on ThreadUp, which I haven't, I think I put an order, it's been a few months since I put an order in on ThreadUp and I just found some really cute stuff so I put an order in and then I just have a couple more just like random stuff to show you. So this is going to be probably just mostly a clothing haul but I also went to I think just one or a couple really cute interesting stores here that um, are very unique. I'll start with the thrifted stuff first because I found some really cute stuff. I found this tank top. It's white with a bunch of flowers all over it. It doesn't say where it's originally from but it just has like a zipper in the back and it's kind of one of those corset ones. Like it definitely has a little bit of ribbing in it but I just thought this would be so perfect for summer. I haven't tried any of these things on yet so I'm really hoping that when I do they do fit but that is that. And then the next thing I found I was just like oh my goodness this is perfect for autumn even though we're not in autumn yet but it just looked so cute so comfortable so cozy and that is this little knit jumper with pumpkins all over it. It's one of those like really cozy patterns like you know exactly what I'm talking about and then the back actually this is the back the back has buttons all down it so cute it's so cute this is originally from the brand bright and beautiful never heard of it before this is just like my dream my dream Halloween fall little jumper t-shirt thing just a basic thing that I got I got another long sleeve workout top this one is in this very like muted blue color. I really like this color of blue. It's like bluey gray. Um, this is, I don't know, don't know where it's from originally, doesn't say. Let's do this little package. So I walked a pretty far distance a couple weeks ago. I actually walked all the way up to Koreatown and there is the shop, right? It's like, I think it's technically, it's like between Little Italy and Koreatown, but um, it's called Curios. Is it called Curiosa? It's called Curiosa, purveyor of extraordinary things. It is like a magic shop. They have it so decked out in there. It's so cool. There's so many like props. It looks like half library, half apothecary, half like you've wandered into Universal Studios or something like that. It is just so well curated. So this is my second time going there and this time I finally got something because last time I think I just got gifts for other people but this time I was like, ah. <laughs> was this little spoon? I just think this spoon is so precious. It has like a little diamond. It has a little diamond on it, it's got little vines wrapping around it, and then the actual spoon part is just, it's so pretty. I don't know what I'm gonna use this for, maybe this can be like my creatine spoon. <laughs> or for like when I'm mixing my teas. I had a bunch of greeting 
cards. I got a couple of art print cards. The artist is Mina Lima, and they're so cute, their cards, but I think I'm just going to use them as um, just wall art. So the first one I got is a map of Hogwarts. I Anything with gold foil. <laughs> Sorry, I'm buying it. <laughs> that is that one. I think it's so, it's so pretty. And the other one I got is her art of the burrow, which again, has the gold foiling. It's so, wow, it's so pretty. So those are those two I got. And then the last thing I got, I actually did get a book. <laughs> I did get one book brand new from the store. And it's a little tiny book. And it's a book that I'm very intrigued about. And that is Kane's Jawbone by Torquemada. Torquemada. Um, I've heard a lot about Kane's Jawbone. Essentially, this is a puzzle murder mystery book that is apparently almost impossible to solve. I think there's only a handful of people who have ever figured it out because the- okay, here's the blurb. Six murders, 100 pages, millions of possible combinations, but only one is correct. Can you solve the murder mystery? Each page has scissors, the scissor uh, instructions to cut out the pages because they're all in random order. I'm assuming each publication comes in like the same order, so they're all in the same random order, but then it's up to you to piece together the story in the correct note on the back that says this puzzle is extremely difficult and not for the faint of heart. I have a couple things that I got when I went out shopping a while ago. Like this is just so collective because I haven't vlogged in a really long time. They were having a sale at Under Armour. So again, I just got another long sleeve workout top. This is honestly one of the best shirts that I own now. Like I can't tell you how much exactly I love this material. It's so stretchy. It's so comfortable. Uh, it's so soft. This is my first time ever owning something from Under Armour. So impressed. Oh my god. And the back is so like nice and ribbed. Flippin' love this. I also went into another store that I had never been in before. I never bought something from this place and that is Levi's. I've never owned something from Levi's but obviously I got a pair of jeans because what else are you gonna get at Levi's? But yeah, um, I realized when I was going through my closet that I didn't, I have one pair of jeans, <laughs> one or two, I think two pairs of jeans, but like they don't fit great ones. So comfortable. The only thing I don't really love is the way that it's all buttons. Hopefully these are gonna last me until I die and they can bury me in them in my coffin. Actually, first of all, I don't wanna be buried in jeans. It's a bad send off and I don't wanna be in a coffin anyway, so whatever. <laughs> And then I also stopped in at Garage and got one thing, and that is this really cute yellow. Yellow is a color that I don't have a lot of in my closet, but I always get compliments when I wear yellow, even though for years I've been like, yellow looks hideous on me, it doesn't look good, but I really thought this was so cute, so sweet. It's this like little t-shirt crop. It's not that crop actually, just thought this was so perfect for summer. Apparently this is just the haul of trying new things for the first time, so Gymshark was having a sale. Again, never bought anything from Gymshark. Best for last, probably. I'm so excited to open this for so long. Leave the shop down below. This is where I got my polar bear sweater from. I love it so much, and when I saw that this store, which is called Fauna & Co, I think it's essentially just run by this one wonderful lady who makes all these embroidered sweaters um, and some t-shirts as well, but when I saw that Fauna & Co were having a shark week, drop. Also with every purchase, I think 20%, I'm pretty sure it's 20% for every order goes towards a certain environmental cause, usually associated with the animal that is on the piece that you are buying. So this one went to a shark conservation effort. I saw this one and then I just, it just kind of propelled me onto a googling frenzy of like learning about all of the different kinds of sharks that she had listed which is like great because that's exactly what it's for is like education and conservation so one that i ended up getting is the black tip shark they come with little notes or little like tickets i just love this blue color and it's just so oh it's so perfect i got a medium which is like a big medium it's very nice and oversized this is my favorite thing this was definitely my favorite thing in this little haul. I'm just so happy. I want to buy everything from her shop, honestly. Honestly, this is the best thing that Instagram Reels has done for me. First of all, I love the sweater so much. I love this sweater so much. It's almost 6 p.m. on Wednesday, and uh, I've been awake for three hours. I'm not someone who I've said has ever really struggled with insomnia. I sleep a lot. I like to sleep. I'm the kind of person who has a little bit of trouble falling asleep, but once I'm asleep, I can stay 
asleep and get like a good sleep that is until like the cats wake me up for the past i don't know how long it's been i think it's been two weeks straight now i have been struggling with i guess insomnia so for the past two weeks i've been falling asleep or I guess the last number that I remember seeing on the clock is 2 a.m., 3 a.m., or 4 a.m. for the past two weeks straight. And it's just been so rough. And it's not like I'm getting into bed. <laughs> I'm not getting into bed at those times. The other morning, I literally just like, I think I got two hours of sleep and then I was so fed up that I just got up at 6 a.m. and started my day because I could just not get to sleep. It's just, I don't know. For the life of me, I don't feel tired in any capacity. Like last night I got into bed at around midnight. Where up until that point did I feel tired or want to get to bed at all, but as soon as it hit midnight, I was like, okay, let's, you know, pause Return of the King because <laughs> it's a three hour film and let's try to get into bed and sleep. And I just could not fall asleep. And it's so frustrating. Like I get into bed, I sit there, my eyes don't feel heavy. I just lay there literally feeling like i want to start my day that's something i've been feeling a lot since moving to toronto i don't know if it's because this place is such a bustling busy place during the day but i've had my most productive hours at night when the sun goes down i feel like i suddenly have a burst of energy and i want to do everything and i want to be so productive and i want to just literally start working at like 7 p.m. Because this keeps happening, it's just been ruining, not, I guess not, well, yeah, my sleep schedule so stupidly. Like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to get out of bed at 2.30 in the afternoon. It's because I've had no sleep that by the time my body finally shuts down, and it's like, I'm gonna go to sleep, end up waking up the next day so late because I've been up so late because i work for myself i can have this weird ass schedule today i don't know what's gonna happen now because i've woken up so late i've obviously been working since i woke up I feel like what maybe it is is it's still a product of coming back from newfoundland because i had like almost a month straight of just incredibly bad anxiety which is still I mean, it's not something that I think is ever really truly going to leave me. It's just something that's always going to be a part of me and I'm going to learn and grow with and learn to just feel safely, like experience anxiety safely, which is such a contradiction because it has just hammered me so much throughout the day, like panic attacks and anxiety and the following exhaustion that comes with that. I feel like maybe at night now, I'm like, okay, well, let's go. I saw a reel today and it just made me feel so incredibly seen and like validated. And it's just so important to talk about these things because it was someone sharing their experience like since childhood. That was literally my exact experience with anxiety and like how they've been having anxiety and panic attacks since like the seventh grade. It's just at some point, you would like it not to be a part of your life anymore. I also recognize that I have no idea what that would look like. Like it boggles my mind that people are just out here raw dogging reality um, with no anxiety. It hurts that I don't know if that will ever be me. My anxiety definitely makes me feel, first of all, so much younger than I am. I don't feel like an adult. For me, I think I've just been thinking recently how upset I've been over advice, I guess advice, not even really advice that I've been given because I have had anxiety from such a young age. Pretty much my whole family and other people around me, lots of people would always tell me that, hey, don't worry, you're just gonna grow out of it. Like you're gonna grow out of it. If it was just some exclusively childlike affliction, it's not the right thing to say or think on two fronts. Number one, because, hey, <laughs> didn't fucking grow out of it, did I? Um, and that makes me feel bad. Anxiety isn't something you just throw out of magically one day and I spent years wait like I, I, I vividly remember being in my bathroom in my family home having a panic attack and envisioning myself somewhere like maybe 14, 15, 16 or if I'm like okay if it hasn't cleared up by then you know I haven't matured or grown up enough and then I started imagining myself like in my 20s and I was like okay like by my 20s like, I'm gonna be a grown-up, I'm gonna be an adult, and so by then, I will have grown out of it. Um, and I spent years waiting to grow out of it. That's detrimental because it never addresses the actual issue, it doesn't um, address the mental health or the mental uh, ill health at hand, it doesn't provide you with any tools you can use, it leaves you in this infantile state of being like, I am small, 
and silly, and this is a childlike thing, that I just have to wait. I just have to wait to grow out of. And inevitably, when you don't grow out of it, there's still that messaging that's like, oh, well, something's wrong with you. Or maybe you just never grew up. You know, maybe you're still in Never Never Land. I didn't grow out of my anxiety. I grew into it and I grew with it. I finished editing up to this point in the vlog and I realized I didn't really have an update at the end, but um, I'm here now with one because I actually finished um, as long as the lemon trees grow and oh man. Just, yeah, I can't give you anything other than my honest review and rating. As a novel, I do not think this was very good. However, I did just post the vote last night for our next read for August on the World Tour Book Club and it is so close. It has never been this close. Like all of them are so close together. So if you want to check out the vote, I think the countries that I listed for August were Sweden, Taiwan, Albania, and what was the last one? Oh, Poland. Um, I voted personally for Poland because I get to vote on there too. I'm actually reading another book and I'm just about to finish it up too. And that is Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. So very, very different book. This is a romance between two serial killers. And again, like, mm, hopefully after this, probably during this, and now that I'm done our book club read, I am starting all of my stack of five star reads predictions that I have lined up for July since um going into my birthday week now but yeah this is just simply okay like it should have played so much more into the fun and silliness because it's like marketed as a dark comedy romance but it's just frankly not that funny like I said they're both serial killers like we follow Sloan and Rowan and they both uh yeah they meet because he finds her locked in a cage of a notorious serial killer that she just killed and he like obviously helps her out because um they don't like they don't kill just random people <laughs> they kill other serial killers like they hunt down the bad guys together um or separately i guess but then they start to play a game every year so this book actually spans over like four years where they get together um rowan's brother gives them the like coordinates or clues of a serial killer somewhere across the united states of america and they have to it's like the amazing race <laughs> they have to go fly over and figure it out and like whoever kills the bad serial killer first wins so that's kind of what the book is focused on and then they develop a romance along the way but like it's so boring in the parts where we're not in that like competition where we're not playing the amazing race time to die type of deal and i think that's where it really falls apart and it i think it just should be so much more funny and dark and crazy like her trick content and trigger warnings list is more of like a really satirical funny page but i'm just like why was the rest of the book not like this like, trigger warnings eyeballs and eye sockets amateur surgery accidental cannibalism not so accidental cannibalism questionable use of a mummified corpse lobotomized manservant, ill-advised use of kitchen implements. That is my reading updates for the end of the week. Thank you for letting me put this vlog out there. Thank you for allowing me to talk about some anxiety stuff. Definitely not gonna be like, you know, super heavy on that every time going forward because I love also keeping the vlogs nice and light and fun. And yeah, that's what I like to do, but also include some more lifestyle stuff so i'm gonna be starting a new vlog tomorrow if there's anything you want to see in that please let me know but i'll definitely try keeping up the lifestyle content again um and it's probably gonna be much easier because i've decided to go home for a little bit again see my family very soon and obviously i'll be taking my children <laughs> with me um the cats grendel and cal they're coming so um hopefully once again some cozy content will be coming your way so thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you so much um it's so lovely to have this community very fun videos coming your way next week so keep an eye out for those but until then um please take care of yourselves please give yourselves a hug from me and ciao